the last video we worked the yield to maturity sometimes we might also have to calculate what's called the yield to call some bonds have call provisions call provision gives the issuer the right but not the obligation to buy back the bond prior to maturity for a fixed price oftentimes that price will be set at more than par value however on occasion it might be set at exactly par value if the bond gets called the bond holder has no choice but to sell the bond for the call price that was part of their agreement when they bought the bond the bond issuer gets to choose if it's in their advantage to call the bond they will if it's not in their advantage to call the bond they'll let it stay outstanding so let's look at a situation with a yield to call if you're a bond holder that owns a callable bond you have calculated your yield to maturity the rate of return you expect to earn if you hold the bond until it matures but now you also need to calculate what might happen if the bond gets called so we calculate the yield to call the yield to call is the expected rate of return if the bond gets called at the first possible call date so in our example here we're going to use the same bond from previously our 20 year 7 percent coupon bond that had the price of one thousand one hundred sixty one dollars and thirty four cents and now we're going to allow this bond to be callable assume that the bond is callable in five years for one thousand and thirty five dollars based on that we want to find the yield to call for this particular bond now the process for yield to call is very similar to yield to maturity we're going to use the five key approach and we're going to solve for the interest rate which is our rate of return so we want to set up our n i slash y pv pmt and fv now we're still going to use the two periods per year approach semi-annual bond now when we look at this problem the bond is callable in five years for one thousand and thirty five dollars what that means is that the company calls the bond they can do so after five years have gone by so instead of getting to hold the bond for 20 years which we assumed when we calculated the yield to maturity we now only get to hold it for five years that means our n is 10 for 10 semi-annual periods the rate of return is still what we're solving for present value the bond price has not changed it's one thousand one hundred sixty one dollars and thirty four cents and again we're going to make that negative to represent a cash outflow the coupon payment has not changed it's still a seven percent bond so we're still going to get thirty five dollars every six months but now the future value has changed instead of giving us one thousand at maturity if they call this bond they're going to give us a thousand thirty five at the call date so our future value now becomes one thousand thirty five the two things that change in yield to call are the n the n will be the time to the first call date instead of the time to maturity and the future value instead of par value it will be the call price the present value and payment will remain the same as we did in our yield to maturity calculation so now we get our financial calculator and we're going to use our five key approach with the data that we had here so we set up our 10 n a quick thing I just thought I should mention this calculator is still set to two periods per year from the previous problem so I didn't reset that but you want to make sure your calculator is on two periods per year when you're doing this calculation so 10 is our n uh, next we want to put in the present value our interest rate we're going to come back and solve for at the end so we want to put in our present value that's the one thousand sixty one dollars thirty one four cents and it does have to be negative so one thousand one hundred sixty one dollars and thirty four cents make that negative using the plus minus key put it into our present value thirty five dollars for our payment and now one thousand thirty five for our future value because that's the call price that they're going to give us and that is the future value
Now we've got all those into our five key approach. Now we want to just solve for the interest and we get 4.04 .04, which stands for 4.04%. Now we can look at this bond. Let's assume that this is a callable bond, like we've been looking at here. And if we buy this bond today, two things might happen. One, the company might call it in five years for $1,035. Or two, the company might choose not to call it and we get to hold it for the full 20 years until maturity. We know that if we hold it for the full 20 years, we'll earn 5.64%. If the company calls it, we're only going to earn 4.04%. Which one is our most likely rate of return if we buy this bond today? Well, while we'd like to get this 5.64%, more likely we're going to end up with 4.04. Because remember who makes the call decision. The call decision is not made by the individual, but is instead made by the company that issued the bond. What we're looking at from our perspective is our rate of return on our investment. But from the issuer's perspective, it's the cost of financing. If they call the bond, it's gonna cost them a little over 4% to have their financing for five years. At which time, if they want to, they can reissue new debt. Alternatively, if they leave the bond run to maturity, it's gonna cost them 5.64%. We can think of call provisions as a way to refinance, kind of like refinancing your mortgage. Assume that you have a mortgage that's costing you 5.64%, but if you refinance, you can lower that rate to 4.04%. Which would you rather do? You'd rather call that bond and refinance it. So typically when the yield to call is less than the yield to maturity, we can expect that bond to be called. Now, in practice, there's a lot of other factors that influence that. If those numbers were real close, the bond might not get called due to the financing costs associated with going, or the general costs associated with going through the refinancing, calling back the bond, issuing new bonds. But when we see a situation like this where there's a considerable difference, 1.6% on the financing rate, most likely we would expect this bond to be called. Now, another factor that might change that is that's our information now. Over the next several years, there's going to be a lot of changes in the financial markets. By the time that bond price gets to the date where it's callable, interest rates may have gone up enough that it may no longer be to the company's advantage to call the bond and refinance their debt obligations.